Drugs. Drugs. Pro Pro gun. Physical assault with a chainsaw, a loaded gun, and an oversized hypodermic needle. Assault. And unwanted pregnancies. Break hand in hand. What do all of these have in common? Anybody? Bear? Uh, is bad for you? Wrong. Miss Sparkles? They all have bad 90s PSAs? You're not exactly wrong, but that's not what today's video is about. Jimmy. Jimmy? Goddamn teenagers, man. Correct. That's right, little Jimmy. It's time to revisit the worst time of your life. It's time we go back to high school. Wait, what do you mean they're in college? What am I supposed to do with this intro then? Donna Donna is Alice Soft's next big break after they decided to slowly move away from the Rant series. It tells the story of a totalitarian society set in modern day Japan, in a rural city that's been brainwashed to worship a certain glorious leader without ever realizing every facet of its people's lives is being controlled, right down to their beliefs. And who better to take up arms against injustice and seal their opponents' hearts than your local heroes, the Phantom Thi- Oh, those guys are busy fighting God in the middle of Tokyo? Oh. Okay, we'll settle for the second best group of rebellious youngsters that hide their identities through stylish outfits featuring a gun-wielding protagonist. Jokes aside, it's interesting to see Persona 5's effect on the gaming industry show itself to this day to say the least. I suppose there is a reason why Atlas refuses to let go of that cash cow seven years after its release after all. In a similar vein, Donna Donna has a very aesthetically pleasing sense of style, which combined with some of its characters and general story beats, are oddly reminiscent of Persona 5 and I for one am all for it. Anything to make Atlas realize it's time to move on to something else. Standing up to their oppressive overlords are Nayuta, a group of five youngsters who, each with their own set of motivations, condemn themselves to a life of crime. And hey, one of them even happens to be the very first openly gay character in an Alisoft game. No saucy scenes or anything even remotely explicit for this one, even though I'm pretty sure every other main cast member every other main cast member does, but with the main target demographic being your run-of-the-mill heterosexual guy, as is the case with the majority of the games in this industry, I'll turn a blind eye to that inconsistency for a change. Now, I wouldn't normally go out of my way to point something like this out, but it's a setup for later. Bear with me. The five of them lead normal lives by day and raid the city's coffers by night. But a criminal life doesn't support itself and they would need to solve their financial troubles through, you guessed it, kidnapping women off the streets and forcing them to sell their bodies for cash. Oh, you thought you had to play as the good guys. They loosely try to justify themselves by saying they're doing this only to people associated with their arch enemy corporate overlords, but really all they're doing is destroying innocent women's lives for their own benefit. It adds a little bit of nuance, I guess, to the main cast that turns them from oppressed saviors in times of need to vindictive terrorists that fight evil with evil, and I can't say no to some good old anti-heroes. However, this translates into gameplay as a resource management aspect by having none other than you, the player, be the one that manages this prostitution human trafficking ring, all the way from the kidnapping process. You're looking at 15 years of life in prison for that, you know? The talents, as the game likes to call them, are defined by three stats. Looks, which determines the odds of a customer choosing them over your competitors. Technique, which directly correlates to how much you can earn per client. And mind, which drops with every uh, session they're forced to go through, turning them into actual mental cripples when exhausted. The process that is irreversible. Yeah. There is some cosmic justice out there though, as you can market your own party members instead on a new game plus, where apparently even the males can get pregnant, so uh... The talent stats are directly influenced by their traits and their clients, and hey, some of these clients even come bearing gifts. There's a gift of technique, very important in this line of work that one, 
a gift of looks? I guess somebody mistook make couch for make cup on their NDAs. And some of them can even give these girls character traits. They can make them quirky, uh, psycho, smelly, all kinds of goofy shit. Of course, not all of these presents are a sight for sore eyes. Meaning, while you might get something like elegant or pure on a good day, you might also get wounded, scarred, or god forbid, blind. Let that sink in. Blindness is a present your clients can bring to your doorstep. On the bright side, you're never forced to get any of them aside from one for one of the girls' storylines, but the game cuts you a little bit of slack there, because while the client in question normally brings blindness with him wherever he goes, he can potentially give you crutches instead. The talents themselves aren't really that relevant to the main plotline. Most of them are randomly generated units with varying levels of traits and basic stats, but there are 12 unique ones you can abduct off the street that have their own storylines to follow. Some of them have good ends, you know, as good as it gets after being kidnapped and forced to do sex work for money for extended periods of time at the threat of your own life. And the rest are just basically in a permanent state of forced labor. Excuse the pun. Something interesting I've noticed about the game is that it owes certain aspects of its gameplay to previous Alisoft titles. Everything from the resource management aspect, map traversal, even the level of freedom the player has to choose their own pacing, and although the combat itself is fairly unique, it still has a certain flair shared by other games in the repertoire. And honestly, it's pretty damn fun. They haven't lost their touch since their renaissance, and it's very clear that they put a lot of focus on player entertainment, which is something I respect a lot. I also find it interesting how they did not even bother holding back with the references. Jimmy, roll the clip. TLDR, as far as gameplay is concerned, whether it's the resource management, the turn-based combat with its fluid animations, and plot gameplay coherence, it's all pretty good. Bald seal of approval. As are most videos on this channel, though, this is a mainly story-driven experience, so spoiler alert from here on out. Like all good stories, we must begin at the Founder's Birthday Ceremony. As far as introductions go, this one had a surprising amount of thought put into it, with subtle hints throughout that something isn't quite right with this town. What's that? Janet from HR forgot her ID and got taken to a concentration camp, never to be seen again? Oh no! Anyway! We segue into our main character's failed raid on a government facility and having to run for their lives, every step of the way feeling... morally dubious. Although, knowing what else these devs have created, I should have probably seen that coming, but I don't mean that in a good way. Sometime after that, one of our main characters gets into a public altercation with one of their rival gangs, where he gets shanked in a dark alleyway. And yes, before you ask, it comes just as out of nowhere as it did in the script. It honestly took me off guard with how abrupt it was, although I did like that very much. That rival gang, of course, as you might have already guessed, is made up entirely of breakdancers in clown makeup and is led by a loose cannon who also happens to be in full face paint. I guess you could say he's sort of a joker baby? No? From then on, the story focuses on our protagonist's quest to bring down Japanese Amazon by any means necessary, along with the allies they find in the most unlikely of places, including a young girl who wants to save her father, a super hacker carrying some emotional baggage, a rough and tough student council president, and a joker. Will you stop it with the Persona 5 parallels already? Half of these don't even make any goddamn sense! Eventually, they get a hot tip from Mr. Clown Man, telling them where they can find some government secrets, and they decide to trust him for some reason? Things actually work out in their favor though, as their search leads them to a highly secured building, clearly hiding skeletons in his closet. They make their way through when suddenly... After getting their asses handed to them by an ancient Chinese warlord come Agent of Chaos, our party gets their second confrontation with their second business rival gang and fellow terrorists, being led by an immortal Yakuza lieutenant. Oh hey, would you look at that. They didn't change his name to Han Det. You hear that? Remember me, you fucking inconsistent localization abomination? Against all odds, our 
Heroes beat all the obstacles and managed to uncover the secret nobody was ever supposed to find out. A femboy. And, uh... That's about it, I guess. No, really. From here on out, the main story kind of takes a backseat as the main cast just sticks around for a while before anything important actually happens. Of course, this could just be my goldfish memory lifespan talking, but one of my biggest gripes with this game is that it just feels like a really long-winded first act only for it to skip the second completely into a 30 minute long third. To put things into perspective, the femboy they find in some sort of cryopod stays with the team as a recruitable character, but it just never really goes anywhere. There's a point later in his side events where they investigate exactly why he was being held hostage in the first place, and they find out that it's because the company was making bioweapons in a fully documented process. That's something they can take to the press, right? Remember how their main goal is to take down this evil dictator company? Bioweapon development is illegal in Japan, right? No? You're telling me nobody in this group of terrorists trying to publicize the company's besties even suggests doing that? Let's move on, shall we? It's ultimately revealed that Zappa was one of the evil bad guy's family members all along. Speaking of this evil bad guy, I actually think he's a pretty good character. Not only because he's a handsome devil, much like myself, but also because he's never shown to give a damn about the main cast members. Or anybody else for that matter, further showcasing how insignificant they are in the grand scheme of things, and that all of their struggles are basically pointless. But not as pointless as what I just said, because they managed to infiltrate his HQ, completely out of nowhere, and pull off the fastest turnabout since the first Ace Attorney by sealing the giant Gundam they were just done fighting in an underground bunker. We don't actually get to see any direct results to their big reveal, and it's left on sort of an open ending where you don't really know if their efforts actually led to any substantial results, which I think was a nice little touch that ties it all together pretty well. All in all, while I kinda like stories that make me feel some level of discomfort without forgetting to make it engaging or entertaining, Donadonna really drops the ball when it comes to its overall narrative and an obscene amount of jailbait that would make most Redditors prostrate in awe. With better writing, this could have easily been so much more, but even if we don't take all of the jailbait into account, I can't really call it anything other than above average at best. 6 out of 10. Hey there, Video Bald here. It's uh, <laughs> been a while since my last upload, hasn't it? Uh, this isn't something I planned on doing at first, or plan on doing ever again, really, but I, I kind of feel like I owe it to everyone that decided to stick around on this channel and see whatever dumpster fire of video I release next, so uh, here we are, I guess. Uh, first of all, thank you all very, very much for over 2,000 subscribers. That's a really scary amount of eyes to have on you, you know? I, I genuinely never expected we'd be able to get this far this early in the channel's life, and uh, it's a blessing and a huge pleasure having you all around. Thank you very much. So, what's this segment all about? Uh, I basically wanted to talk about what to expect from this channel, where it's going from here, stuff like that. At first, I wanted to just dump my videos and let that be an indicator of what you should be expecting from any of my uh, future uploads. But between all of the people that subscribe mostly for my rants content and others that want to see stuff like the Fear and Hunger video, I think it's only fair to give everyone a clear direction of sorts on where we're going from here. So, first off, for all the people that came here for Rance content, don't worry, I still plan on making at least one video per game. My motivation for the series sort of died out by now, because, you know, it started off with my hype at its peak with Nine finally getting a global release, but uh, it's been a while since, so... I'll just take my time with it until I get a good mental image of what I want each video to be. As for content similar to my Funger video, I'd say it'll happen... eventually. I spent a long time thinking about what this channel should be, because, you know, the way YouTube as a platform works is that people subscribe to a channel because they want to see a specific type of content, so the creator has a responsibility to deliver on that. And when they do, it creates a sort of positive feedback loop where more similar content results in more 
interest, result in more views, and so on. You get the idea. But I don't want to limit myself to any one type of content. You know, part of the reason why I started making videos was because I wanted to make something fun to watch that I also have a level of passion for. And I don't really want to lose that. Maybe we can get to a point where I find a sweet spot between both, but as I'm still pretty new to the YouTube scene, I'll just let it hang loose for now. Actually, part of the reason why I wanted to make a video on Donna Donna specifically is just so I can draw a parallel with Alicesoft as a whole. Minus the jailbait. But I want to make entertaining videos without tying my entire brand identity to any IP or type of content in particular. You know, sometimes I'll make a video on a story that I want to share, sometimes it'll be a dumb parody, a game review, I could just end up gushing about something I like, or clowning on something I don't like. Uh, I want to try my hand out at all sorts of things, basically. Now, I don't really expect this to turn out very well in terms of algorithm friendliness or numbers, and I definitely don't expect any of my future videos to do nearly as well as that Fear and Hunger one. There are some ideas I have sewing around the pot that I'm a little more confident in getting a bit more exposure with, but yeah, expect the unexpected. Kind of. Oh, right. Uh, just in case, since I've covered quite a few Eroge so far, that's not going to be a channel theme going forward. Probably. You know, sometimes I talk with a little pomp, giving the impression that I kind of know what I'm talking about, which isn't completely unjustified since I do put some level of research into each video I make, but I'm not really an authority on the genre or anything. I, I think I played like, what, five games total? Most of which I didn't even know were Eroge when I got into them, so... Uh, in a way, I didn't want to hesitate in covering them because I absolutely hate that mentality that holds anything sexual up to be this like, holy, untouchable ritual or... The way most people I grew up with personally see it as this vile thing you're not supposed to ever talk about, when it's just a completely normal part of life. So while I don't have any strong prejudice against adult games, I don't really go out of my way to play them, and I wouldn't go out of my way to cover them on the channel either, so you'll probably not be seeing many of those. Or maybe I'll find one that I really want to share with the world, who knows. Uh, Anyway, I hope I don't sound like even more of a dumbass than usual when I'm not in video mode, and uh, uh, as per usual, thank you for watching. Subscribe!